States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, Ms. Mayor, if you would do the roll call, please. I would be happy to. Colin Trivet. Yep. Lisa Collins. Um, she is coming. Oh, she's here. She's here. Hi, Lisa. Lisa is here. Gary Dunlap. Here. Joe Gittens. Here. Cheryl Hancock. Here. Anita Jekinsinski. Here. Kate Marin. Here. Tim Miniger. Here. Okay, thank you. With seven of the seven board members present, I would declare a quorum. Uh, approval of the agenda. I would note that the agenda has been posted and distributed and sent to the media and it was amended on the 22nd so there may have been a posting prior to that. Um, I would entertain a motion to approve the agenda as published. I would so approve. Is there a second? Second. Discussion. Seeing none, all those in favor of approving the agenda as published, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion carries. Public participation. Is there anyone who wishes to address the board relative to any item at this time? We ask that a five minute time limit per person be followed. Please come forward, state your name, address, and topic to be addressed. And I saw Mr. Brown get up, but he's signing in. Anyone want to speak? Okay, then recognition and thank you. Um, Dr. Carlson. The district wishes to thank the La Crosse Community Foundation for recently awarding the Home and Nutritional Services Department a $1,650 grant to be used for funding meals for students in need. These funds are proceeds from the Jim's Grocery Bag 14th Annual Golf Benefit held June 4th at Forest Hills and organized by attorney Brian Weber of Holman of Johns Flaherty and Collins as a memorial for Jim Gokey. Jim, a former attorney at the same firm, initiated food drives in the La Crosse area to fight hunger. So again, very much appreciative of the, of the grant donation to the school district. Okay, thank you. Then moving on to reports and discussions. Um, we have a number of reports and discussion items to come forward. We're hoping to keep to a tight schedule. We only have one hour for this meeting, but we have about 57 minutes to get done. So if we could keep that each report to about five minutes, that would be appreciated. So the first thing is the HEA um, collective bargaining agreement. Uh, Mr. Clark or Dr. Carlson? I'll make a few comments and then Mr. Clark, if uh, Phil needs to add anything, he will do so. I might just address, if I could, you have two issue papers in front of you, items 8.1 and 8.2. So I am going to address uh, each of them, but they are separate. Uh, the first one is regarding the collective bargaining agreement with our HEA. Uh, uh, as far as base wages goes. In the proposed base wage agreement, the issue paper that you have is very similar format to what the board has been presented actually in the last two board meetings with some of our other employee groups. In this case, the proposed wage agreement, base wage agreement, allows base wages to increase a 0.226%. The district's negotiations team arrived at the 0.226% base wage increase by first considering the cost equivalent of a 2.07% base wage increase. The team then reduced this base wage increase by an amount necessary to cover the cost of a full step advancement wage increase. Uh, allowing for step advancement, the longevity, uh, wage increase reduce the base wage increase to the amount of 0.226 percent. This amount um, is the distribution of this amount will take the form of a 0.226 percent per cell increase in the wage rates of the prior year's wage. Uh, it is the uh, administrator or the team's rec uh, recommendation that the board approve the the collective bargaining agreement with the HEA as presented. And then uh, in a separate action tonight, uh, the board will be asked to consider um, what we refer to as lane movement. Um, similar to longevity, lane movement is not permitted any longer um, under negotiations. 
and as a result of uh, recent state law changes in the past few years. So the board is unable to negotiate this. Um, however, the board may adjust wages via the lane movement. So in this action, the administration would be recommending to the board to allow lane advancement for eligible teachers in the 2013-14 school year for qualifying credits and degrees previously earned. That's just a real brief overview, and I would uh, leave it for questions that the board would have on either one of those, but those are separate <coughs> actions and uh, recommendations this evening. So are there questions? Any questions? So I think just to, for the record, in the past we have provided and recognized those traditional lane uh, recognized credits that they've received and then provided a lane movement so that they could, as they take more education, um, more educational credits, they could then um, move along the, the lanes and receive a higher compensation. In the past, yes, there, but there have been times, I believe as <coughs> recent as two years ago, where there was not movement okay. on, on that. Just like a year ago, the decision was made that there was not movement, what we would refer to as down on the salary schedule or the longevity, or in other words, the steps. Um, so it is the recommendation that in the end it would be um, recognizing both these steps and the lanes. And so there is no, I think one of the reasons we looked at the lane advancement was because <clears throat> we had not presented to our staff any changes and they were in good faith taking credits with the understanding there would be that recognition. And I think we, that may not always be the case. In the future, we may be looking at other ways to compensate them and give them credit and recognize the extra work they're doing outside of the school um, for those professional development. And I think we just to go on the record to say that um, because that's something that we haven't done in the past. Yes, that would be correct. And I would, I would uh, again, encourage, and I know as a board we have discussed the, the interest um, that needs to occur as far as looking at and working with our our uh, teacher, our teachers, our teacher group to look at alternative models and forms of compensation. And so you, you are correct. And I think as you said, we're looking at alternative forms of compensation and recognize those things. So I think that's the key thing that in the future it may not always be like this. Yes. So oh, I have just a brief question. I'm assuming not every district in Wisconsin does this because they didn't have to for a few years. I mean, just I, I wondered how many years has it been since our, our staff has gone on to accumulate credits without compensation? Has it been like three, four, something like that? The, Help the, me with that. They were recognized a year ago. Okay. Uh, we actually, a year ago, um, that was part of even not advan because one of the reasons for not advancing a step is because the priority was to catch up from the previous year. So last year, there was two years worth of movement um, on the lane, on the lanes for our teachers. Right. Yeah. I, I just I'm very glad to see that. You know. So there really teachers. was just one year though that we didn't recognize that. Yep. And I don't have the history beyond <coughs> that. Um, I, I don't have that's, that available that's tonight. Okay. That's, that's really all I needed um, to hear. I'm, I'm proud of how our district honors that. And Mr. Menning. And we're looking to take action on this tonight, is that correct? Yes. That would be correct, Mr. Menning. So I, I guess more of a comment, and I just wanted to get my thoughts, this has certainly been our tradition. Uh, we typically introduce an item at one meeting and take action at another. Um, I'm generally supportive of this resolution. Um, however, I'm uncertain why we are not following our usual pattern of openness and allowing time for public input. Um, I'm interested in what other associations that the school district works with that may feel about their contracts that have recently been settled. 
um, as well as other public input. Therefore, when we come to the consent agenda, uh, I am going to make a motion that we delay to our next meeting, which would be our typical pattern. And let me be very clear, it's not that I'm opposed, but I want to be consistent with our other practices as well as uh, allow for openness and time for community and other association input. So this was not on our last agenda. That would be correct. On our, okay. I'd have to look back to confirm and um, be happy to do that on the other employee groups. I believe the other five employee groups that we presented past two board meetings I'd have to look to confirm whether those were uh, presented yeah. over and two two board meetings um, and I know the contracts weren't but this being different being non-negotiated being a completely independent board action without negotiation there really sure. has been no opportunity for any input sure from anyone and you know that just seems to be outside of our normal practice from anyone outside of the board that is correct I know that there was a reason it was put on for this date. I think that had mm -hmm. to do with payroll and the um, this back pay and trying to eliminate having to do that. Now, will this require that we have to do two different? Will this add a burden to um, the payroll department if we do delay this one and not the other one and do the other one ahead of time? Well, I think it will, uh, boy, and I'm, I don't know, I might ask Mr. Clark to respond specifically on how it may impact payroll. And I, if, I, if I understand correctly, it might be that item 8.1 possibly <clears throat> would be still considered this evening, but, but the interest is looking at 8.2. That is correct, yes. Okay. So, um, if 8.1 is a let's just say is approved then how might that impact if we if the board takes considers the other action at a future board meeting there will be additional clerical time in the payroll office to <clears throat> process a correction to the original pay this and that's the cost doing cost of the decision if it's, if it's important then you would assume that cost is necessary and just have to weigh that in and so the the purpose of doing it together with 8.1 was that there would only be one of those changes or one adjustments. of those changes I think the other thing was that um, <coughs> in, in uh, staff coming back and actually having returned many of them and you know they've been active over the summer but formally returning um, the idea of having this concluded uh, before staff returns I think has an impact um, on staff as they return as well Again, um, just a factor to consider. I understand Mr. Menninger's point as well. Okay. Any other questions on that, on 8.1 or 8.2? Then 8.3, budget development process. Is everybody looking at me? I didn't. In Mr. Clark. <laughs> <laughs> I could start if you want. No, I'm good. Okay. You can add. Um, so, you know, remember back in 2012, the board uh, took some time to actually have some special workshops and discuss the budget development process and assigned the finance committee some work on that. They came back to the board uh, with a recommendation. The recommendation was actually to introduce some changes to the budget development process over two fiscal years. And we saw the first of that last year. Uh, used in the development of the 13-14 budget and now comes time to implement the second set of changes um, in the development of the um, get my years right here 14-15 budget and um, those activities are uh, actually started already um, this adoption of this calendar and uh, deployment of tasks to people will put in place uh, formally what you approved um, a year ago as a two-year implementation process so you have the calendar before you um, with the deployment and description of activities as well as the dates of all those activities I'd be happy to answer any questions and dr. Carlson I'm sorry if you okay. any questions on budget development process 
All right, then community center update. Mr. Clark, did you have? Well, I'll just make a comment and then I might, I am gonna turn it over to perhaps you and, and Mr. Clark. I have communicated with the board in the last couple weekly staff updates, um, specifically to a legal opinion and direction on leasing of property. And so I hope you have had a chance. Um, I think in your board folder, there's even a paper copy from the school attorney. And uh, you know, again, that's specifically talking about if, if where this might ha lead to is that the district would be leasing property in some form uh, to, to serve uh, in some form as far as the community center. So that's what has been communicated most recently with the board. And I would look to, uh, again, I know that uh, Mrs. Hancock and Mr. Clark are board and district representatives on the committee that continues to move forward. And so if you want to make some additional comments at all um, or open it up for questions by the board or some way, some direction perhaps uh, appropriate for, for any of us. Mr. Clark? Um, the committee in the last couple of meetings has worked hard on um, site development. Uh, while there's been some concept drawings and elevations for the community center, as you'll remember from the actions the board took <coughs> on this, um, one of the uh, clear messages was that the construction of the community center on the site should not interfere with the operations of the school. And that goes beyond inside the walls of the school, but uh, how do we flow around the school building? Uh, pedestrian traffic, uh, bus traffic, um, visitor traffic. And uh, so they spent a good amount of time on that and think we have um, a concept that will work well uh, for both the students uh, and community members uh, using the facility. Uh, much discussion about uh, lease and what would the content of the lease be. Um, there were 12, 13 items identified uh, as categories that should be addressed within the lease. Um, some of the categories within the lease um, are related to other decisions that are being made on uh, what's the potential governance model um, for uh, this community center. Um, representatives from each of the municipalities is something that people uh, feel strongly about, that that was the start of the collaborative effort and needs to be a part of the Board of Trustees model. Um, that governance uh, model has already moved to the creation of a bit of a oh, job description, I guess you could say, for a Board of Trustee member. Um, so those are some of the activities that are going on. Um, they've engaged, do you engage a volunteer? Anyway, they've gotten an attorney to volunteer. I engage sounds like you're gonna pay them. They found an attorney who's going to assist with the development of the lease agreements, uh, governance bylaws, and those types of um, uh, documents. Uh, what am I missing, Cheryl? Um, I've got a couple things. So yes, Mr. Clark did a great job. We will be actually meeting with the volunteer, um, the attorney tomorrow evening. There is a meeting tomorrow evening. In addition, we're talking about programming, so meeting and discussing that with some partners like the YMCA, Gunderson Lutheran, um, and then fundraising. They've just established some guidelines and timelines and some materials so that they want to get ready to go in the next few weeks. Um, they also, I know the Holman Area Partnership for Youth is still going to be doing its talent show, so all you singers out in the audience, um, you know, sign up for that talent show this fall in November. Um, and looking at continuing to do those fundraising kind of activities. So it looks like you have, I think that's... I thought one more that uh, um, uh, we continue to um, look at information on what will be the operational cost. Yes. And, and uh, the comment that made me think of that uh, was President Hancock talking about the programming. And what is the ongoing operational cost going to be? How will those costs be met? Will there be revenue generation associated with the facility? And that's the ongoing long-term cost. And then there's also discussion about the upfront, the capital cost. And uh, that relates then to the fundraising and meeting the cost of constructing the facility. Lots of details to be worked through on those types of things as well as if the district is going to lease the land and facility, how do we go about getting this constructed on the facility? Who supervises the construction? 
who pays for the construction to the boards policies related to facilities construction apply in terms of bidding and all of those things so many details um, some of it is what comes first you can't jump all the way down the path on one topic because there's so many related issues that you need to take care of first so, thank you yeah and I I think my role as the, a board member is to um, continue to let the committee the collaborative committee know that we are very supportive of this um, program and activity and that as a school district we're working very hard to make it work not only for us but for the youth in the community so um, we continue to um, go there with that idea in mind so I think that is it then moving on to food service position dr. Carlson and Melissa where I may we've been working um, on a position um, it's it's not entirely unique but um, I'm going to let um, I believe I'll give it a start and Melissa maybe you come up to the table I know that you uh, worked today with Mike to collect some additional data so um, we have a food service staff member entering a second year of leave at one of our schools and uh, last year that was filled with a substitute position and while we have many fine substitutes um, as you all know uh, having a substitute or multiple substitutes isn't the same as having the same person there and knowing the routine of operations each day um, in fact uh, last year having to use a substitute to fill this position it left us a little bit short of substitute employees in all our facilities from time to time uh, they're very our staff are very creative about ways of working around that but I would say uh, it's not a good long-term solution so we had a number of vacant positions this summer and that allowed us to be introduced to a number of really high quality people that applied for our food service jobs in fact we had um, in this case more highly qualified people than we had positions available and we got to thinking about the dilemma we have at this one school with a person on probably a second complete year of leave not knowing for sure and a really highly qualified person who wanted to work for us and um, we said we should make this happen um, it will address some of the shortages that we had last year to afford greater continuity and service to the families and students in the building um, so we're advancing to you we're going to call this a floating substitute position the position will be not floating a whole lot initially because we're going to use it to fill this need it will become a regular employee not a substitute employee but a regular employee in that position and that'll help us to preserve our substitute list uh, to meet other incidental substitute needs that happen throughout the year if the employee does come back from leave we will look to normal attrition to create an opportunity for this person um, and we would use them then as a floating substitute until that need um, occurred um, we could also evaluate it and say this floating substitute thing is the best we've ever idea we've ever come up with and uh, uh, keep the position rather than dissolving it when a vacancy occurs so just trying to keep you informed of what we're doing and why we're doing it we just think it's a great opportunity where you have some good quality people uh, looking to work for the school district of home when you say floating do you mean they're they're going to go from school to school possibly uh, that that could initial, possibly uh, that could possibly happen but we know that this kitchens lived with a little bit of instability last year because of that kind of moving around and so I think our initial plan will be to uh, place this person in that one position and create some continuity in that kitchen Joe but that certainly could happen long term with this position I would just add to the same item that this is does appear on your consent agenda tonight also on your consent agenda includes two other positions that actually the board already considered but I wanted to I felt needed to put it back on there tonight because uh, at the previous board meeting don't think it really was um, posted in advance as it should have been and so I'm going to ask you to uh, take action on to those two additional positions much like you did last board meeting and so you find that all under I believe 11.9 um, separate from the personnel report on, on your consent agenda questions for the food service position or or the other two okay thank you then student activity accounts and that is Mr. Clark again. 
So you have a board policy, 662.1, that deals with student activity funds management. Uh, for those of you who've been on the board for a while, you may remember that actually our audit management letter, the letter that comes from the auditor each year that says, here's some things you could do better at. Uh, student activity funds were on there in the uh, late 2000s, 2008, uh, if I'm remembering correctly, thereabouts. And um, we made a number of changes and board approved new policies to bring us in compliance with student activity fund accounting. Student activity funds are different completely from other funds in the district in that the funds should really be managed under adult supervision by the students, raised by the students, managed by the students, uh, decisions made by the students. And uh, there's really very few of our groups that fall into that category. As you may remember, we established the gift fund at the same time we really got much narrow in terms of application of the student activity fund so many of the things that used to be in student activity no longer meet the definition and uh, are somewhere else so you have a very select group and those are on the issue paper for you where we have a uh, student uh, advisor we have a staff advisor there are specific policy provisions which these individuals agree to enforce and uh, the administrator agrees to oversee these as student activity funds. So annually, uh, we bring these to you to have the board confirm uh, that these are consistent with the policy 662.1, and administration has reviewed it to ensure that we're advancing those uh, three, uh, four, pardon me, four groups for your consideration <coughs> this evening. Okay, are there any questions? This is on the consent agenda. I see one um, has been eliminated. Does that mean the fund itself, the SAD fund, has been eliminated, um, spent down, or it just isn't fit anymore? Uh, what might happen is that or, and or others may come back to you for later consideration at this time, just prior to the school year starting. They did not meet okay. all the requirements of a student activity fund, so we could not uh, advance it to the board administratively we couldn't make that recommendation uh, we left it on there and struck so that you could see it was a drop an intentional drop from last year but uh, could come back and be added great then we will move on to board member reports and discussion um, Colin all right I just want to start by uh, congratulating the football team for their victory at home against Chippewa Falls on Friday 14-0, I believe Chippewa had negative 33 rushing yards, so that was pretty impressive. It was also good to see the students come out, especially the freshmen come out to see the first high school football game, and then also the community members come out to support them. And then also tonight up at the high school, the Freshman Mentor and Renaissance Program is running the Freshman Orientation. So I'd just like to acknowledge them for giving up their Monday night to go help out with the freshmen. Thank you very much. It's good to hear those things, what's going on, so appreciate that. Lisa Collins. Okay, Gary Dunlap. I have nothing at this time. Joe Gittins. Nothing. Anita Jagosinski. Wow. Moving fast. Um, <laughs> I just wanted to welcome everybody back, and um, I would echo what Colin said. It was kind of fun to sit out on my front steps in the dark on Friday night and listen to the <laughs> football game and those. <laughs> My Cheers. husband refereeing the football game. Hopefully <laughs> nobody was hollering at him. Um, yeah, it was kind of nice. I, it's hard to believe that it's that time of year again, right? football season. But yeah, um, anyhow, welcome back and have a great school year to everybody. Okay, thank you. Kate Mayer. Um, again, reflecting Anita, thank you to all of our teachers, staff, custodians, everyone, bus drivers, it's it's starting up again, and it's exciting. Those of us who, well, I don't have grandchildren yet, I might, but I know many of us on the board too, and they're being picked up by bus drivers every day. Um, have a great year, wonderful. I'm looking forward to the breakfast coming up this week to uh, congratulate our teachers who have reached some milestones and welcome our new teachers. Um, just wanted to let my fellow board members know that I've agreed to a position on the Policy and Resolution Committee for WASB um, and will represent this area. So as I get more information about the upcoming meetings, I think the first one is happening at the end of September, we might have some good input and I'd be proud to be your spokesperson. So uh, yeah, that's it. Well, thank you, Kate. Uh, Tim Menninger. 
You know, I always have some comments. And, and first off, I want to uh, congratulate the uh, Holman High School Band um, in the Corn Fest Parade. As a fan of Emerson Lake and Palmer, I was very excited <laughs> oh, uh, me too. Uh, to hear the band as they came marching down the street. So it's uh, just uh, brought me back a few years and uh, definitely enjoyed it, and they sounded awesome. So congratulations what to them. What did they play? What song? What, what Emerson Lake, like from the beginning, or what song did they play? Sorry to put you on the spot. No, Tim, and, and it was a, a, a slight version, I want to say, of uh, Carnival, but uh, All right. um, it was good to hear them, but don't 100% quote me on that. <laughs> okay. um, it is also a very exciting uh, new school year, um, and certainly, again, welcome back the staff, the students, and looking forward to another great year. Um, also, a little personal exciting for me, I they do not live in the school district, unfortunately for them, but my uh, oldest granddaughter is starting 4K this year, so uh, now I get to go round two through all of the <laughs> things and looking forward to that as, as well. Um, and then the last thing here, uh, next Monday is Labor Day, and uh, I always kind of joke at work that uh, you should have to know the meaning of the day in order to get it off from work, and uh, certainly... Uh, labor Day is a great day to pause and reflect on the tremendous impact and contribution that labor has had um, in this country. And certainly uh, we know that firsthand from some of the great uh, employees of the Holman School District, but uh, wish everyone that while they're enjoying the day off, just take a moment and understand why they have the day off and certainly the contribution of labor in this country. So happy Labor Day to everyone. Thank you, Tim. And happy birthday to you, Tim. Is it your birthday Bieber. today? Yeah, yeah but <laughs> I'm trying to avoid that. <laughs> He's looking at me like <laughs> I don't know you knew that. <laughs> we should sing happy uh, no. birthday. No, we should. <laughs> we should. <laughs> On the break, let's get the meeting done if there's time in between. <laughs> well, happy birthday. Thank you. Um, I just want to, you know, Tim, I share with that the looking at school through the eyes of a five-year-old and my granddaughter. I got to go school shopping with her and her mom and... I still, I told Anita tonight, what is a plastic folder? I don't know, I couldn't find them in Walmart or Target. I think I have to go into Office Depot. <laughs> so, and then the tri-fold napping or resting pad, that I think we've got a fourfold, but it'll have to do, I guess so. But it was fun and she's so excited as she's gone in, we put it in off to the side in one of the living rooms and she's unpacked it and packed it and, she just, come, look at this. I want to keep this one because there's extra tissue that we're donating to, I don't know. But it's just been fun and to teach her the, the meaning of sharing because that whole concept that you put these in your box and then the rest are going to go for the, you know, the rest of the school year for the other students. And, and that's just been a lot of fun to, to do that. So, um, and so you do look through the eyes of that five-year-old at what impact we make on young people's lives and it's beyond the school supplies and all of that obviously but um, it's been a lot of fun and seeing posts on Facebook with teachers who have got their rooms all set up and they're so proud of their rooms and and although and you know they've been in there many days already getting that done and, and that's just again speaks to the the work and the dedication of our staff that they're here whether they're being paid or not and they're not counting those 180 190 days um, it's very rare to find those folks and I don't think we tend to hire those folks so we we've got a great staff whether it is our teachers or our custodians who have the, the buildings um, ready and beautiful and our, our transportation folks and the, the food service staff and our educational assistants and our administrators and supervisors we just are blessed to have the people we have that work with us and are part of our team. And I was so. thinking as you're kicking them off, the IT staff yep. must have just been working beyond yeah, belief. With all the wireless stuff oh happening. Oh my gosh, I, I can't wait. Yeah. <laughs> I think a whole bunch of so. people can't wait to see what they've been doing, so thanks to all of you. Yes, uh, thank you and good luck to everyone for a new year. It's, I think it's gonna be a great year. Um, so keeping <coughs> moving on so that we have um, stay on schedule. Um, school board committee reports, you have the finance committee notes and the personnel and governance notes um, in your records or in your folders. Board meeting schedule, September 9th and 23rd, October 8th and 14th, and October 8th, um, we have 
Oh, we have the WASB meeting. I'm sorry, the, the WASB is October 8th. The 14th and 28th are our board meetings, and then November 5th, we have a board workshop at about 5.30, so please get that on your calendars as well. Um, board policies and administrative rules for review, animals in school, and student representative on board. Are there any, I think this comes forward to us so that you, if you have any input, if you see any drastic changes that need to be made, um, I, if the Student Achievement and Learning Committee is looking at making any drastic changes, then that would be a good time or a good thing to bring to the board, but otherwise um, it's just an opportunity for discussion. So I know I remember animals in school, that was a big one years mm -hmm. and years ago, man, we went around and around. So hopefully the work has been done and it's just a review. No, I, re I, I know too, like 40 years ago, there were pets in classrooms all the time. And I really <clears throat> respect yeah. that piece of it, but I also think we've also addressed the safety and allergies and everything else. Um, I sort of laughed when I read there are certain things you can't bring to school, like ferrets and raccoons and wolf hybrids. <laughs> so, Darn so it, that, that gave must have been an issue. <laughs> they gave me a chuckle. Somewhere somebody maybe brought a wolf hybrid to school, but I um, appreciate the work that's being done here just for the safety of the school, um, and still to honor the fact that pets and animals in a classroom have a remarkable effect upon kids, especially special needs kids, yeah. um, and what they do for them and how they comfort them, and uh, the responsibilities that kids use. Plus, I know that our science curriculum also has animals in the classroom, so to look at all of that is very important. I don't mean to make light of it. No, it's, it, yeah, it is very important, yeah. so. I would just note, too, that committees are organizing at this point and getting ready to kick off for their first meetings in the fall, and some have already. Some are, I know, seeking um, individuals, whether it's a staff member, um, a, a community person. I know the um, Personnel and Governance Committee is looking for members, um, an individual who ha from the community and then maybe a parent or a member of the community and other staff to serve on that committee with us. Um, but I know other committees are also forming and reforming. Some have renewals or, um, from their current membership so they aren't necessarily in need of additional community people. But if people are interested, please reach out to the superintendent and let Dale know. and. Um, we will see if we have openings where your talents um, fit. So, then moving on to district administrator's report, Dr. Carlson. Well, in addition to what's been included, I would highlight that today actually we welcomed a number of new teachers, and and so that was a, it's always a highlight. Uh, we started out early this morning, that continues on tomorrow as well, and so thank you to. So many people involved with that process, uh, the hiring process selection, and then uh, specifically today for our orientation. It was already mentioned about our welcome back Wednesday morning. Again, I would encourage or certainly invite all board members to attend as much as you can. We do start breakfast in the high school <coughs> cafeteria at 7, and then at about 8 o'clock we're going to want to um, be seated in our gymnasium, which we are even starting the process of trying to cool down as much as possible um, because the gym itself is not air conditioned, but working hard at trying to capture some cold air from other parts of the building. So please, um, and let Christina know, let myself know if you think you're going to be able to join us and we would welcome you to even sit up front <coughs> near the podium. I would highlight also in your board packet, you have the, the important uh, continuous improvement plans. And while we don't have a presentation on those and take time for those tonight, I would encourage you to review. Those highlight the work that, um, really the summative work done throughout the 12-13 school year. And work has already started um, this summer um, on looking ahead to this year. And so thank you for uh, our principals, supervisors, uh, department heads for the work that they did to really close the 12-13, but actually use that to step right into 13-14. A lot of information in there, and I would encourage if you haven't already, 
try to spend some time with that. So other than that, um, I'll take questions. Otherwise, nothing further. Okay, any questions? I don't have a question, but I do have a comment. I read every single continuous improvement plan today, and that took me a long time. And I'm not complaining, because as it took me that long, I realized how long it took people to put that together. The statistics, the data, the comparisons were phenomenal. And I know school districts across the state do that in varying degrees of excellence. I would say that our reports for any community member who wants to go online and spend time with us um, will be really impressed. Uh, thank you. Thank you, really, to all the, all the staff. I don't even probably know the names of all the staff that helped with this, but those of you who are in administration know who they are, and please let them know. Uh, we board members so appreciate graphically presenting the information that was put together in all of those plans. Yeah, I think it brings to heart the philosophy that com continuous improvement is one of the policies of the school district and that a strategic plan isn't just something we do a couple nights over the year and then put it on the shelf, that right. we really look to those things and the onus is on us to do, as you said, Kate, read those and it is very, it does take a long time to read those. Um, so. Uh, we know it takes just as long, if not longer, for them to put those, those materials, to collect that information and put them together. But it's a lot of fun to see, especially the community involvement and what they, you know, accomplished with that, so. Okay, then, moving on to consent agenda items. We have nine items, and at this time, if anyone has any items they would like to have removed for independent consideration, please do so, let me know. Item 11.6. 11.6, which is the HEA lane movement. Any item, other items to pull out? Otherwise, I would entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda with the exclusion of 11.6. Is there a motion? Also move. Is there a second? I'll second. And discussion? Questions on any of the other items? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Then on to item 11.6, HEA lane movement. Um, is there a motion to approve item 11.6? So moved. Is there a second? Second. And any discussion? Tim, I think. Yeah, I, I do. Is, is, I guess as someone who's, you know, been upset with the goings on in Madison, I've seen way too much polarization. Uh, there's a physics statement that for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. I have tried uh, many times to maintain my beliefs um, and able to find a common middle ground amongst all this polarization and chaos that continues to exist. As a school board member and parent, I have been very supportive of the staff here at Home and Schools. As a school board member, we have approved an employee handbook very similar to the old collective bargaining agreement and at every meeting we introduced sections and then did not take action until a following meeting to allow time for public input and openness. As a school board member, I have supported the concept of having an advisory team of district employees for review and input into the handbook and other issues so that employees of the district, as many have great ideas, still felt they had a voice and that the board would listen, and we have. Um, I have been supportive of pay that has put many of our most experienced teachers amongst the highest paid in the area. I do not want my action mistaken. I want to be very clear that I am supportive of our hardworking employees. However, I have seen too many times in Madison agendas that have been rushed through with little public input. The end does not justify the means, and if we use the same process to advance an agenda, then we are no different than those that strive to use the same tactics to put forward a different agenda. It is important that we do not have an equal and opposite reaction. It is important that we stay above the fray and keep our beliefs and practices. It is therefore important that we follow our process and do not rush this through without opportunity for public input, as well as input from other associations that have recently ratified their contracts for the coming year. Again, I am not opposed to this idea. What is troubling is the process in which this is being done, in which I cannot support, and would ask again that this item be delayed until the next meeting so that as a board we are transparent, open, and listen to all, 
and not become like those in Madison that we had oftentimes disagree with and do not agree with the process. And therefore, I will not be supporting this tonight. Not that I am opposed, but I have to maintain my beliefs and say that I am opposed to the process that, that is very equal to an opposite process used to advance a different agenda and cannot support it as a result. Thank you. Is there anyone else who had any questions or comments? I Have we ever had this happen before, where something new was put on for us to vote on and we voted that night because there was a special circumstance? I, I was thinking there was, but I'm new to this board, so. I can't remember I, specifically. I, I, I'm sure there was. Where something has only been considered at one meeting or brought up at right, one meeting. Right, and it yeah. was presented by our administration and we felt as a board that we would support that my answer would, my answer would be yes I but if you're asking specifically something similar to That's this a, I can't no, I, no, I can't I'm answer not. that no it just seems like I have heard this before and again I'm new so I apologize for the question yeah. in a sense because I'm not sure how many times it happens but you know one of my other concerns is the other associations have all settled and how does this make us look when those are all settled and I would love to have some of their input because this is not a negotiated item and it just seems like we are, are as we have tried to be open community based listening to those of the community it seems like we are doing the exact opposite in this resolution and that has not been our tradition and not been our practice uh, amongst members of this board Gary yeah I think that uh, I agree with Tim 100% that we need to get input from everyone involved and everyone that has it. But I feel like uh, with this issue especially, we've had, we've had a lot of feedback. We've talked to, we've talked to all the employees. It's not, like, it's not like we brought this up and, and put it on the floor with no, uh, with no uh, respect for the other employees or, or feedback from them. We've had plenty of discussions, plenty of meetings, uh, plenty of input from people I agree with what you're saying, but I just don't think that using this uh, this object as a model for something that was that was rushed through with with no input, I don't think that's appropriate. I think that uh, there was plenty of input, and I think that uh, everyone agrees that this is the right thing to do, and including the the employees that it involves. Um, I think you probably could have picked a better one to maybe use as an a, example. Maybe a question for Dr. Carlson then: As this is a non-negotiated, how have we gotten input from other associations? and or this association on this because this is a non-negotiated item so I'm just curious I mean have we had gotten input from others on this and have we had this out in the community before for any discussion prior to this night's meeting I as far as this is an item that we have conversations with employees about but not through negotiations um, I might have conversation with leadership uh, for example, but uh, again, it's not, it's uh, looking at what their interests are and things that are important to them. And this is one of those examples. But to, um, as far as anything formal um, would be as far as under the negotiation uh, meeting time. Um, I have a question too. I'm kind of, I'm just wondering, Tim, for clarification purposes, what would it look like to have more inclusion? I mean, specifically, what would that look like and what would the time frame be? I think generally we introduce and then take action at our next meeting. It allows for the public an opportunity to see through the paper in our minutes what we've discussed. It allows for them an opportunity to our co come to our next meeting and give public input. It would allow for those associations that we've already settled their contracts an opportunity to say, well, this seems a little bit different because we've had our increases cut because of the uh, seniority things and stuff like that. And I'm not saying I disagree with it. And, and I would support this and vote for it at the next meeting, obviously, unless there was some public outcry that got us all to change our mind. But I'm just very interested in why we are not wanting public input into this particular issue as we have had in so many in the past. Um, it just seems to me that uh, as, a, as a board that has talked about openness and, and wanting public involvement, uh, we're going against it with this particular piece of legislation that can be perceived by some um, to be a little bit troubling. I am not one of them, but there are some that could have some trouble with this uh, resolution and, uh, 
it just seems like we're we're rushing the issue without an opportunity for public discussion. All right. Is there any reason why it has to be passed tonight? Jay already addressed that a little earlier, but. Right. I don't think the convenience of our payroll department would outweigh the needs of the public disclosure. I don't well, think Well, I went back and looked well, just now. I just went back and looked at our last meeting where we approved, I think where we approved the half fee. And we d it was not on the agenda before. And, and so I, and it, you talked about tradition. It has not ever been the tradition of this board to get input from other associations about the agreement we are having with other associations. They certainly have that opportunity to come to us if they see that, but we that's not been a tradition that we've had in the past. And, and I agree that this is not a negotiated <coughs> issue. This is not a contract. This is an action that the board is taking unilaterally. So I would truly agree as, as why I supported the uh, HEA agreement tonight that was for the first time out there. Those are very different. They are negotiated agreements that there's opportunity for input. This is a non-negotiated action by the board that is, is giving a association more than the 2.07% increase. I am supportive of that, but I think the public needs to be aware that that is happening and opportunity for input. And even though I am supportive, I am troubled by the events in Madison, and I'm very troubled by their lack of debate, their lack of discussion. I believe in democracy, and if they have the votes, I've always said vote it up, vote it down, but allow time for public input. What I've been most frustrated with is the lack of public participation in the democratic process, because that to me is a dangerous path that I've seen way too many times in Madison and I have been strongly opposed to that. And therefore, I cannot support it, if, even if it supports a position I believe in. Um, and in this case, I do it. I want that very clear, but the tactics to me are very similar to those that we've seen where we are, are trying to circumvent. And this is not a negotiated contract. It is different than the HEA agreement. It is different than the food service that are a separate negotiated meetings have been held. This is a solely non-negotiated board action with little opportunity for public input. I have a question on the negotiations team, and I was, have not been part of that process of, you know, and that involves community members, administration, correct, and of the board members and things like that, or the personnel and governments committee. Is there a discussion generally about, you know, an action like this, maybe not specific, but has there been discussion and feedback from those members on those committees because that's been my impression of what's been discussed. Right. Is that wrong or is that correct? Or? Well, we don't do community involvement in the base wage negotiations. We have a representative of the association or the employee group, and then we have a school board representative and administrative. administrative. Where this differed is that as we as the administration was looking at um, the base wage negotiations and if um, as uh, the steps became important so longevity became important to the HEA it resulted in only a point zero two or two point two two six point two two six um, settlement and it would not allow for us to recognize the credits so the administration, the credits that they took, and so it was brought to us as a recommendation to separately allow for the lane movement to happen and recognition of those which adds um, to the cost of the settlement. And I think that's where we are here then today. Yeah, just to reinforce, this is the administrator's, administration's recommendation. And just to reinforce in that, maybe to further clarify, it's something that with, uh, as a result of my conversations, my relationship working through with, with that, that specific group, this is where the recommendation uh, I decided to bring forward. And so, and I, I, I understand uh, it's up to you if the timing is, uh, because I feel that's the that's the real question, yeah, or 
That is the Arguable issue. And as I said, I'm not opposed process. to the idea. But because it's non negotiated, you know, we don't yeah. allow other associations yeah. to have input into the negotiations. But this is a non negotiated board action. Yeah. And as a result, this is different. Yeah. And I'm just concerned that some may have interest in that. Yeah. And if they do, I'd, I'd love the opportunity for them to be heard. They may not. I mean, it, but to me, that, that is why we have typically introduced a resolution at one meeting and then don't take action till the next one to allow the opportunity for that. But we also, I think we could probably research and find other examples where time sensitive things were needed that we did bring things just to one meeting and pass them. It does not happen very often, Tim, and your concern is so noted, but I would just say if this is something that we're going to do anyway. Um, and we did, we did exactly that tonight. The, the one before that one. Yeah. Yeah. So there is a motion on the floor in a second to approve item 11.6, which would be the lane mov movement. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Nay. Motion passes. Then um, adjournment. I would entertain a so motion moved. to adjourn. Is there a second? <coughs> a second to adjourn. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Opposed, nay? nay. We are adjourned. <laughs> Tim. Is this where I stand up and say shame now? No. Whatever. Whatever.